Welcome to the InfoLive TV weekly debate at our Jerusalem studio. With me is Yoni Ben Menachem, Director General of Israel Radio, and Chana Senora, longtime uh, peace activist and co chairman of uh, IPCRI. Today, our first topic is the Palestinian territories. Yoni, on the backdrop of the scheduled meeting between President Abbas and Prime Minister Olmert, it has been reported that Israel is considering a request by the Palestinians, by Abbas, to deploy the Jordanian army's Palestinian Badr Brigade in the West Bank. Uh, how can such a move assist President Abbas? I heard some uh, denials from the Palestinian side. You know, this is uh, an old story. Every time they bring it up, every few months, the same story about Badr Brigade coming from Jordan to the West Bank to assist Abbas. I don't think Israel will agree to it, and I don't think that uh, this story is true, essentially. And uh, I don't even, if, if Israel will allow the Badr Brigade to be deployed in the West Bank, I don't think that it will help uh, Abbas, because uh, these soldiers, uh, of the, the Palestinian soldiers from uh, Badr Brigade, are trained to uh, confront uh, a military force, not uh, to fight uh, Hamas, or not to fight uh, uh, terrorist organizations, and I don't see any what so what effect it might have on the ground. But essentially, as I believe, as I told you, I believe this story is not true. Let me correct your information. First of all, there is no request, and uh, politically, uh, the uh, Palestinian Authority will not request the Badr Brigade. Also, the Badr Brigade, although. A few months ago, we were in full force with younger people, about 2,000. Now, because of monetary problems, they are down to 500, and they are not effective anymore. Uh, Abbas, Chairman Abbas, President Abbas, has made it clear that at the moment he will not engage in dialogue with Hamas. Does this mean two separate Palestinian entities in the future, one, the Hamas state in Gaza, and a Palestinian Authority in the West Bank? On the ground, actually, what we have, we have a Gaza separated from the West Bank, controlled by Hamas, military-wise. Uh, and what we have is the Fatah uh, controlling the, the West Bank with the help of Israel. Um, I, I, I heard the position of uh, President Abbas, but I think that this is only true for the short term. On the long term, he will have to start the dialogue with the Hamas at some stage. There are Arab uh, pressures, uh, there are people trying to medi mediate between Fatah and Hamas. Um, Abbas looks at it as a, as a coup d'etat against the, his le legitimacy, which is true. It's a coup d'etat, a military coup d'etat by the Hamas. But as I said, on the long run, the Palestinian interest has to be above everything. And this, the Palestinian interest is to have Gaza and the West Bank united uh, in a way, or connected in a way, for a, a, an independent Palestinian state. This is the dream of the Palestinians, and Abu Abbas will not be able to ignore it. Well, uh, for the first time, you are right. On the <laughs> issue of uh, your uh, last piece of analysis is that no Palestinian leader will ever ac uh, accept or acknowledge that uh, we should continue in the way we are divided uh, in Gaza and the West Bank. Uh, uh, yes, now at the beginning, because of the emotional uh, outcome of the coup d'etat, uh, people said we are not ready to talk, we have uh, to go back to how it used to be before. But right now, uh, internally, even within Fatah, there is a movement uh, to restart the dialogue. All the factions under the PLO are requesting that. And what is more important, there is uh, the Arab pressure, especially of Saudi Arabia, to have uh, both Fatah and Hamas resume their uh, dialogue. And I believe may, maybe in the short term, the situation for the next two, three, maybe six months will continue the same as it is, as it, as it is today. But eventually, uh, the two sides will have to talk and probably go to some kind of early elections uh, to try to overcome the present uh, impasse. Uh, the man in the street does not like uh, to see Fatih or Hamas uh, not working together because both of them are important uh, Palestinian movements. And uh, we have to learn a culture of political partnership. 
I mean, you have Likud, you have uh, Labour, you have uh, right wing, you have uh, leftist in Israel, but they all work for the interests of the state of Israel. So in the Palestinian camp, the man in the street wants to see all the parties work for the interests of the Palestinian people. Egypt. Egypt doesn't seem to be doing that much to bolster Abbas. They have reiterated their objection to the deployment of an international force along the Gaza border. Is Egypt's policy, uh, what is Egypt's policy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Abbas and the Hamas takeover in the Gaza Strip? Well, in the first uh, days after the coup d'etat, uh, President Mubarak uh, used the same terminology of, of Abbas and calling it also a coup d'etat, but then he changed his uh, position toward Hamas, and now he, he's trying to be the mediator, uh, not taking a position and trying to mediate between Fatah and Hamas, and this is because of the Arab interest uh, not to be involved directly in the crisis, but to be a mediator. Um, as for the international forces, the deployment of the international forces, I think uh, Mubarak doesn't want these uh, forces to be deployed on the Egyptian side of, of the border with, uh, with Gaza, uh, but uh, I don't think he would mind that these forces will be deployed on the Palestinian side. Uh, basically, I don't think that these international forces can prevent uh, the smuggling of weapons or can, you know, uh, take over uh, uh, the, situ the security situation uh, there. It will not be effective. Uh, it's enough to see what happened uh, with UNIFIL in South Lebanon after the Al-Qaeda terror attack. Uh, and and I, I think that once these UNIFIL forces will be attacked by Hamas or by other or Al-Qaeda uh, uh, members in Gaza, uh, they will not stay there and uh, it will not be effective. So this whole idea is not good, basically. The role of Egypt has been always important as facilitator, sometimes mediator, trying to uh, present the Palestinian point of view to the Israeli government, to the uh, United States and other international quarters. Uh, here uh, it's urgent and needed also in facilitating the exchange of prisoners and the release of Gilad Shalit because Egypt is actually doing this role between Hamas and the Israeli government. Now on the issue of the international force, something like UNIFIL, uh, I agree with Yoni that this uh, probably will be on the Israeli-Palestinian border and not the Palestinian-Egyptian uh, border. However, the conditions are not mature for that uh, force, although 10 European countries recently said that they are ready to participate in such a force. Uh, I believe uh, the coming negotiations between Olmert and Abbas and uh, 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 in my opinion, uh, th this force might be also necessary to uh, resolve the issue of the borders with Jordan and the borders with Egypt. Because uh, now we are also on an impasse with uh, the present situation with Hamas in control of Gaza, is that the borders with Israel and Egypt uh, so far has been closed. And there is a huge humanitarian issue that has to be resolved and as fast as possible. More than 25 people have died just waiting on the Egyptian side of the border so far. Our last, my last question, Lebanon, from a Palestinian point of view. Uh, we've seen recently and within the last two months uh, very heavy clashes between the Lebanese army and the Fatah al-Islam uh, Islamist militants in uh, northern Lebanon, in the Nahar al -Bared refugee camp. We've seen, as you mentioned, the attack on UNIFIL uh, forces in the south, also said to have been uh, perpetrated by Al-Qaeda-linked or Islamist Palestinian militants. Uh, Hana, do, do you see this strengthening of, of radical elements among Palestinians in Lebanon as a... Well, uh, Palestinians are not involved. Actually, mm -hmm. this is an Arab movement. Mm -hmm. The issue is that they are using the Fatah name. Mm -hmm. But it's Fatah Islam and not the Fatah movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Palestinian movements under the PLO are actually working together with the Lebanese government in order to uh, uh, sort of distance themselves from what is happening at the moment in Lebanon. The way of resolving the issue in, uh, in Lebanon is really to uh, Israel act actually uh, 
working with uh, what we call the Arab Peace Initiative because uh, this is the way to resolve the issue with the Palestinians, with the Syrians, and the Lebanese. Uh, as long as the Syrian-Israeli uh, uh, conflict, which uh, in a way is a result of the uh, capture of the Golan Heights in the 67 wars, uh, if that issue is not resolved, Syria will use all its means, and uh, we are saying that it's using uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon as a way to actually destabilize the situation while its borders with uh, Israel are actually very quiet since uh, 1967. So uh, uh, the way to uh, resolve the issue in Lebanon in uh, with Syria and uh, with the Palestinian side right now is probably to combine the Arab Peace Initiative with the roadmap process and in the roadmap process, we should uh, not be stuck with phase one, although right now uh, Hamas is actually doing phase one in Gaza by taking uh, all the uh, military equipment of all the other organizations in the Gaza Strip. And I believe also President Abbas in the West Bank has uh, said that uh, he wants to remove all the weapons from uh, all the militias uh, that are present in the West Bank. So in a way, uh, we are moving on phase one. It's not yet complete. Israel also has to do a, a parallel thing in phase one, which is to freeze settlement activity, which Israel is not doing also at the moment. Uh, in, in, in this way, uh, Tony Blair is coming on the, to the picture right now as the uh, super envoy appointed by the quartet. Uh, I think uh, for him, if he start discussing what we call final status issues, the future of Jerusalem, the future of the settlements, the issue of the refugees, the borders between the two states, uh, uh, in, in this way we will have a political horizon and uh, we can move forward, but it has to be on a multilateral track, which is uh, Israel-Palestine, Israel-Syria, and Israel-Lebanon. This is the only way available right now to us. Otherwise, we will lose the momentum of uh, having a two-state solution, and we will be stuck in a conflict that will be maybe generational. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to the point of Lebanon. Do you, do, you, do you think that a peace process uh, be it the Arab uh, Peace Initiative, the roadmap between Israel and the Palestinians, or Israel and Syria, will really influence the the tensions and the clashes between the Lebanese government and the militants in the Palestinian refugee camps, or do you think they're headed towards a civil war? How how can that avert the, a civil the, war? The, the militants uh, uh, in Lebanon uh, among the Palestinians are actually, uh, in, in a way, uh, not uh, fighting with the uh, with the Lebanese government. Uh, the recent uh, what happened in Nahr al Barid and elsewhere in Lebanon actually is an Arab fundamentalist military organization that uh, is doing the same thing in Iraq against the Americans, uh, probably with links to Al Qaeda, but not to the Palestinian side. Mm -hmm. Yoni, civil war in Lebanon, do you foresee No, it? no, I don't think so. I think I agree with Mr. Senora. This uh, Fatah al-Islam is affiliated to al-Qaeda or maybe to the Syrians. That's the different versions. But uh, And there are some Palestinians uh, who are members of Fatah al-Islam, but it's not a Palestinian organization. This is true. This is an Arab movement uh, uh, which is uh, working against the uh, Lebanese uh, government. And, uh, I think there is a consensus there because Hezbollah is also against them. They are not uh, f uh, supporting them. Uh, and all the Palestinian, Palestinian organizations are against them because they are harming the Palestinian interest. And there is a consensus to help the Lebanese army uh, to fight them and to eliminate them. And I think eventually this is what will happen. Uh, the B Lebanese army is working very successfully in, uh, in Nahr al-Barid refugee camp. And eventually, I think, they will be able to make them surrender or they will get rid of them eventually, uh, but definitely it will not cause a civil war. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank yeah. you.